Goodai fish tank is our roving cameraman. Geisbert Wogendoren is back from his work trip overseas and he's done another store tour for us at the Lifestyle Pet Hyper. So sit back guys and enjoy. Lots of interesting things to see. Okay, so we've got a nice marine section going here. There we see some what, what looks like damsels, yellowtail damsels. Very hardy marine fish as I recall. But uh, something you can do as a beginner. And here you've got some goldies. Not sure what they're called these days. But nice shoaling fish for your reef aquariums. Coral fish, lyotail coral fish. Very good looking fish for those reefers out there. And here we've got, uh, I think these are bicolor damsels, if I'm correct. They almost look like a, yeah, bicolor chromas. They almost look like, like they've been dipped in some sort of ice cream sauce with that bicolor thing they've got going, anemone. And there, of course, a regal tang made famous by a movie Finding Nemo as Dory. Yellow, yellow tail tang. With tangs, you've got to remember, they require vegetable food. So some nori, algae, or something like that, that that will serve them a good step. I like that orange guy down below there. That's, I, I know it's a dwarf angel. I know him as a jumping bean. Yes, jumping bean, I'm correct. And there we see a nice blenny, or goby. And here we're back to Gauteng's National Fish. The Mbuna of a Malawi cichlid. Here you see a couple of nice looking ones. In the middle, the stripy one, I will never forget that. Melanochromus auratus. And they're quite a feisty fish. And those look like albino eye biters. They become quite impressive fish when they are bigger. And some venestas, if I'm not mistaken. And some more mbuna. You see the mbuna are the elongated ones, the rock dwellers. Whereas the, the, the peacocks are more laterally compressed. Some more Malawi cichlids. And yet more of them. If you're not into plants, then these are the fish for you if you want to do an impressive rock scape. I like those little rocky outcrops. Quite a big variety of them. I find they're a lot more popular in Gauteng than down here in the Western Cape. Although years ago I knew a breeder here that had his whole backyard enclosed in greenhouses and tents and aquariums everywhere with his Mbuna fish. Discus, I like discus personally. I haven't kept them in a very long time. They require really big, well, they're not really big tanks, but Big tanks, nonetheless. You don't want anything less than a 55 gallon, 75 and up is better. And this I like seeing the way they keep their bettas here. You'll see there's some filtration at the back of the little enclosures and there's a gentle drip return from the filter. That's way, way, way better than I have seeing them in cups, unheated cups. One thing about bettas is they require heat, like all fish they require good water quality, but they don't like filtration that's blasting out, they don't like fast flow, and the way it's done here is ideal, I must say, uh, this, is, this, is, this is a little thing in the shop that impresses me a lot. Nice fellow there with the different colours. And here we've got these water cows, bubble eye goldfish. Guys, let me know in the comment section, are you a fan of bubble eyes? Or do you think that's going a bit too far with breeding fancy varieties? And let me know in the comment section. They do look rather cute and there's a nice sea cow. <laughs> they look like cows to me somehow. I don't know if it's the expression or what it is. But here's a nice looking rancho. Ranchos, of course, are the goldfish without the dorsal fins. 
and then over time, depending on the, the, the quality of the actual fish, they'll develop a wen, which is that growth, that growth of skin on the head. Almost looks like a cap. And back to the marines, to the salt water, seawater fish, there's a very nice looking powder blue tang. Beautiful fish. Very nice, and there's a sailfin tang, one with a, well, as the name says, with the, the high fins. Make sure they get some vegetable stuff. I find it's good to introduce them in a tank that's been going for a while, it's got some algae growing there. Another regal tang. And there's a boxing shrimp at the back because if you're threatened, they put their hands up like a boxer. Lots of different corals here for the reefers out there. Guys, please remember to smack that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm or so I'm told. I always appreciate that. Nice tanks here over corals. You can see they sort of shallower tanks that's sort of going broadly from front to back so that they can get enough light. With corals, your light, of course, is crucial. There we see the prices. I can't comment on that because I'm not a reefer. Nice little coral there. And those are dancing shrimps, I know that. It looked like a tap dancing, I kept them way back. I had a small seawater or marine or saltwater tank, however you want to call it. I'm thinking of doing a simple one again. And I really do like seawater shrimps. They're bigger than the freshwater ones we keep, except maybe for the wood shrimps. And they really are undermining, I've found, the shrimps in a, a seawater tank. Nice bit of rockery that I've created here with a path going to the back. I'm a sucker for these little paths. I don't know what, something in my mind likes a path that's going somewhere. Sort of like, almost like a tunnel. That's a, that's a nice mangrove swamp sort of look that they're going for there. And these are still very young with money rainbows. They color up tremendously once they are bigger. Some mollies. Molly's always remember you need all alkaline water and don't like soft acidic water like we have in the Cape. Being in Gauteng you have mostly hard water and that's ideal for them. If you have soft water, put in some crushed coral. And here we have some platys and sawtails. I kind of like that one in the middle with a greyish body with a bit of orange and a stripe down the length of a body that more resembles a wild type sawtail. You don't see them too often anymore. And I do like those. And some Kohaku swords, I think that color variety is called. Of sword tails, you've got to watch for jumpers, so keep a lid on that tank. And your aquatic lawnmowers, otherwise known as a silver dollar. I like these fish, and they're really nice diver fish or shoaling fish in a big tank with South American cichlids. Some nice looking platies. And more platies. Guys, please remember to share among your fishy friends. Helps the channel, also helps out the store that Geisbert is filming. Some baby Oscars. I think by now, if you're watching this channel for a while, you know they require big tanks. They're water dogs. It's not for an average little fish tank. You need a big tank for these boys once they grow. Some golden garamis, free spot garamis, this is the golden color variety. Nice little hippo statue. And there is some dwarf garamis. And some coolie loaches as well, scuttling about. Crivensis, one of a few fish where the females are more colourful than the males. 
once we do cut up there you see a female chasing the other one away that's a dominant female there and this is a paradise fish one of the first aquarium fish to be kept in the hobby along with goldfish in Victorian times where the servants had to go and uh, blow bubbles with a bellow to get the filtration and circulation going so they must have been tough the fish in those days as well as the servants some more garamis there not for sale undergoing treatment that's always nice to see that uh, a shop is conscientious in terms of not selling sick fish and some lemon tetras and here some crypts in the pots some cryptocorines and some head and tail like tetras these heart shaped tetras as opposed to the torpedo shaped ones like your cardinal and your neon and your raminos they are good for keeping with these guys angelfish so angelfish grow bigger and they might snack on a neon but these torpedo shaped tetras can't fit in the angel's mouth so I find they very good tank mates for angels some roses and things like that here we've got some tiger barbs that's the golden variety of a tiger barb sometimes called albino but it's not a true albino because it hasn't got a red pupil and some some rosy barbs there we've got the color on the males there there's a rainbow shark or was it the red tail shark I couldn't quite see and red eye tetras And here's your conventional color tiger barbs. They look great in a big shell, they have a reputation as fin nippers, but a tank full of them with more semi aggressive fish can do very well. And some. Here you see uh, albino reticent shark or bagasius cat, they eat huge tanks. But this guy, the electric blue akara, is a very nice secret that doesn't grow that large. It's a substantial fish, but not doesn't grow huge. And they are, as cichlids go, quite peaceful. And some rams as well. Remember rams, I think the secret is they like warmer temperatures, much like discus, 28, 29 degrees Celsius, and softer water. There's another few, some cardinals. And here we have Colombian tetras. Once again, a fish that colors up very nicely once it starts growing. And some flame tetras very mixed in. Are they flame tetras? Yes, when I edit and do this voiceover, I do this on a small screen on my phone. Sometimes I don't quite see as well as I should. Those are glow light tetras. And silver tip tetras. Tell me in the comment section has anybody ever kept silver tip te te tetras with tiger balls? I have a reputation for being a bit thin up and I wonder how they do with each other. I think it's a combination that could work. Tell me if you've ever done it as Facebook goes through the selection of shrimps. That's another bucket list item of mine. Still have to do a shrimp tank. And the moss in the Suzvasa tank, always popular in your shrimp tanks. As is the aqua swale. Quite a nice variety of shrimps here. And back to your Small tetras, some X-ray tetras, or pristellas, some more Colombian redfin tetras, and white skirt tetras, you know, a white black widow, that's nowadays always glowfish, and here is what a glowfish is supposed to look like, your original black widow or black skirt tetra, and the bulletproof white cloud mountain minnows, 
You can even keep them with goldfish or in ponds outside. Here's one that went traveling and ended up among the cherry bobs. The cherry bob, of course, one of the peaceful, community-friendly bobs. And here's the golden color variety of the white cloud mountain willow. And some black phantom tetras and black emperor tetras. It's funny, I've got a breeding colony of emperor te tetras in my big tank and a little black youngster made its way to, to juvenilehood. So every now and then the black one pops up, pops out, and then of course if you collect the black ones and you breed them to each other, you're going to have a black strain. And yet more tetras. Some danios. And here you see the plant section, and it's interesting to see there's some emerged plants being grown here, outside of the water. And here's all the dry goods. And guys, there's some terrarium plants as well. So stick around to the end of this video where there's some nice displays of not only aquariums but terrariums as well. And this is usually where I leave you. So, so fish tankers, please remember to subscribe. If you haven't already, thank you to everyone who did. And until I see you again, take good care of those domestic denizens of the deep.